What is up you legends? I'm joined by my friend Alex here Hello, in Geneva again. Yeah. He has invited me out to try out this gorgeous SNS AMG. And this is a beautiful car. And today we're going to talk about the value of these cars and certain cars which are appreciating, but also test this. I've been lucky enough to drive one in the past, but I'm really excited to get back behind the wheel. Interestingly, we've actually got an AMG GTC Roadster there. So it's cool to see both of them next to each other. But this is an absolutely legendary car, not made in huge numbers, but what makes it special are both those doors, its design, and the naturally aspirated 6.3 liter V8, which produces 571 horsepower, 650 newton meters of torque, and allows this car to go from 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds. Now the design is what made this car so famous. It's kind of a throwback to the 300 SL Gullwing, one of the most legendary cars from Mercedes, and they brought out that aspect in a dramatic way with these butterfly doors, which look really cool, but the lines actually with the door closed are really pretty. Now you can see you're basically sat on the rear wheel in this car. So you're literally, your head is right there, rear wheel is there. You're all the way at the back of the car. You've got a boot we'll show you in a bit, but the front is so long, really long hood, which gives it a particular driving experience, which we'll talk about in a bit, because I'm gonna be driving this car. But then one thing which not many people realize is you'd think, you know, the engine was around here, but actually it's all the way around back to bring the center of gravity of the car further back and so then in the front, you've just got radiators and kind of added space there for the design. Now, there are quite a few changes, as you can tell, with the AMG GTC behind in terms of the way the grille is displayed, the light. Everything has been changed. And that car was not to replace this. It was purely inspired by it and sat actually at a lower price point when it came out. It's really, really nice. You've got, look, steel brakes on this, steel brake calipers. Um, there was an option to have those finished in gold as well, which looks real nice. But this is a very classic spec, very classy. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, it's just a beautiful car. The door handle's very particular, obviously, with the particular way the doors open and close. Getting into this car in the interior are also fairly spectacular. But um, I thought I would start off by showing you one of the kind of key things in this car, the boot which you operate by using the key. It's got quite a good size boot for a supercar of this price point, producing this much power. I mean, it's not massive, but you can fit, you know, a weekend away's worth of stuff in there. So it's really, really fairly practical. I mean, obviously it's no Rolls Royce, but it's doing pretty well. And then this interior is pretty particular. There's nothing really that resembles it, which is what makes this car quite special. So the seats are glued, as you can tell, to this platform, which covers the boot because your stuff goes right behind you. You've got the parking sensors right there. But then when you get into the car, you have to step over this huge sill where they've actually put this like leather platform here so that you don't scratch the paint too much when getting in. And when you're in, it's pretty tricky to reach that door. Ugh. I'm not the tallest guy in the world, but it's not very easy. But when you do, the door is actually surprisingly light. And then you're greeted by this beautiful steering wheel housing the paddles for the gearbox, which is finished in Alcantara and leather, uh, and a bit of plastic actually in the middle, which is not the nicest feeling stuff. But you've got then a completely analog dashboard. That's because the car was first produced in 2010. So it's not a brand new car. You know, you're, you're tw 10 years old now. Um, so this car's a decade old but still looks awesome. It revs up to about 7,500 RPM, and you've actually got shifter lights. So you know on a Ferrari, they kind of put them up here. Here, the shifter lights are just down there between your indicator. Well, in, not actual indicators, you're just indicator indications. Is that a word? Indicator indications? Oh well. And then when you come here, obviously it is all dripped and drowned in carbon fiber, and you've got a bunch of buttons. This is to control your different modes. You've got Comfort, Sport, Sport Plus, Manual, and RS. Your AMG button, your traction control button, and this put a little rear wing up and down. This is actually to control, if I put the ignition on, and that controls this screen in front of us, which is pretty old school, obviously, with this car being about a decade old. But the visibility is, yeah, really particular. You've got these small windows, and you've just got the side mirrors which kind of look over that rear arch, and the front windscreen is really upright and quite small, so it's a very particular way, and then you're just looking over what looks like an ocean of hood and bonnet in front of you. It is massive. It's so long. So quite an interesting and particular car to drive. And then, yeah, I mean, very comfortable seats. You've got heated seats on the interior but this thing is a beast it's rear wheel drive and if you don't treat it with respect it will bite your head off so on that note let's put some gopros up and let's head out for a drive first of all listen to this naturally aspirated v8 Ooh. oh yes that sounds pretty good pretty special sounding let's take it out so we can open it up a bit we find ourselves on some little Swiss roads and obviously you need to be very conscious of the varying speed limits in Switzerland because 
yeah they're very strict here and often they'll change and you can get caught out by that so i'm going to be keeping an eye out now this is rather particular scenario <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if you, if you guys can see it but we literally have two horses, horses. and two dogs just in the front <laughs> this is a very special scenario where's the other dogs on your left okay well <laughs> Let's so, go back. Yes, yeah, so back into the mode. I was saying we're on some Swiss roads, clearly. A bit out of town. <laughs> we're not in central Geneva. But yeah, this is a very special and particular car to be driving. The market value of this right now is just under 200,000 Swiss francs. Now they're worth actually quite a bit more than that in the UK. I'm going right here. And it's a special car because of those nearly 600 horsepower. The naturally uncreated V8. Of this thing inside is pretty pretty special yeah it's pretty special i mean the fact that it's naturally aspirated you feel like you're driving a muscle car you got that huge hood in front of you you're sat on the rear wheels and you got that massive engine with 650 yeah. newton meters of torque as soon as you put your foot down it really wants to slip because you've got 650 newton meters 571 horsepower and it's such like a particular car to drive you need to kind of adjust your driving style to the car so you drive it and it may sound bad but honestly it's quite enjoyable but you kind of drive it like a bus <laughs> like you throw the front in and kind of let that go through the corner and then you swing it in if you turn too suddenly you're going to get caught out because the front is so long yeah. so it's a it's a really particular way of driving it i really like this style it's so different to like a ferrari or a lamborghini it's its own kind of way of being a supercar and you kind of want to drive this with your arm back cruising with that v8 just kind of burbling in the background the way they've done it and designed everything from the interior to the way you look over that hood and you've got those air inlets kind of slicing through the hood in front of you it's all kind of like g-wagon-esque and square inside carbon all over the place and they've done such a good job in the design of this car and the way it makes you feel and i understand perfectly why these things are appreciating the suspension's quite hard because it is you know kind of like targeted towards being a bit more of a grand tour but the suspension is fairly brutal but that's you know they didn't have the technology they have today you know in the same way as the um, gearbox it's fairly brutal and fairly slow it's a single clutch gearbox it's just you know it's a, it's a 10 year old car so you can feel that in the way that it drives but i actually quite like that because i've always said this and i'll keep saying it this era like 2010 to well no 2007 to 2012 wow. <laughs> yeah it pushes it's relentless like you accelerate and with the torque it kind of pulls you then you just change gear and all it does is it just engages more speed it's it i mean we can't go fast enough for it to give up but like it just feels never ending the power it's such a cool feeling oh wow I re and that noise is just brutal it's like rude it makes you feel rude this car and you like to play with it the whole day you never yeah. bored and there's a corvette coming wow. past that's appropriate this is like <laughs> european corvette anyways i was saying that the era 2007 to 2012 the car was like kind of cars had the power and the technology to be like epic driving experiences but not too much power too much technology and they were still fairly raw you know like the scud like the 509 gto murcielago sv or this they're proper experiences and they feel really special they've all got their particular characters today all cars are good all cars are competent in every way it's just a question of taste what you want whereas here it was like ah. Oh, it was just such a it's fantastic not the era. Same. This is like an old gen. You feel the old gen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, uh, especially in this one because that one has the butterfly, the butterfly doors, yeah. the long bonnet. Like yeah, the yeah. The bonnet is so so long, and and it's even. There's an even more special version of this. I'm yeah, gonna talk about yeah, that you've, because you've tested like uh, which I've had, had the few years before. The luck of driving, yeah. Um, it was incredible. So I mean basically these cars are going up in value. Yeah. They were very expensive to start with, you know, similar kind of money to what they are now. And they depreciated at first because there were quite a few, you know, coming out and anyways they went down in money. And then people started realizing just how special they were and how little actually in the grand scheme of things they'd produced especially of the black series they only made around about just over 100 black series so they're like 
really, really rare. And then they started going up because they discontinued the butterfly doors on the AMG GT, and people suddenly started getting interest yeah. in these cars. You know, wow, it's the only one that kind of has those butterfly doors and throws back to the original 300 SL yes. Dolby. And you get that sound because now everything's turbocharged. Wow. So all of a sudden, it was like, wait, it's we're not, not going to have as well. So yeah, we're not going to have this 6.3 liter naturally aspirated engine anymore. So then it started becoming, you know, more interest. They went up, the markets went crazy, and now the market came down. So it's not really the value of this car going down a bit. You know, they were maybe at around 200,000, two, uh, 250,000, sorry, at one point, and they've kind of come down a bit now. Oops. Yeah, the market value kind of went down on these, and that was just purely the market. It wasn't really these in particular being affected by that. But they have everything to keep going up. They have yeah. the story in terms of going back towards the 300 SLs. They've got the limited aspect, there aren't that many. They're naturally aspirated, which is something which is becoming more and more rare. And they've got a particular character. I mean, you can have a collection of Ferraris, a collection of Lamborghinis, but you're still gonna wanna take your SLS out yeah, every once in a while. Because that one is gonna be totally different. Exactly, it's completely different experience to the others because the others you know some of them are fairly similar but this is yeah it's quite something i i personally am a massive massive yeah. fan of this car it's, it's the only one that has like this massive long bonnet this yeah. butterfly wings doors yeah and exactly. that makes this car way more special than the others yeah i agree and the way you have to drive it like even now so you kind of like swing the front in you, you learn how to drive the car you know, the car's not driving you, you need to kind of show it who's yeah. boss. And it will bite your head off. <laughs> like rear wheel drive with this amount of power and the like kind of crappy traction control systems of back in the day mean that it will literally bite your head off if you're not careful. And that's fun. You need to kind of grab it by the back of the neck and show it who's boss, yes. which is really, really good fun. I, I think it's a fantastic Especially car. when you arrive on, on the place and when you put out the, the doors. Yeah, yeah. It's, it feels totally an old yeah. vibe, it's something real oh, yeah, yeah. special It's as got well. such a sense of occasion when you show up somewhere <laughs> exactly. and you open those doors and you hop out. No, it's awesome and I think it looks really cool, really classy uh, from the outside. Can we give it some here? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Three, go. Two, one. Go, go, go. Whoa. Ooh. That is fast. That is really really fast yeah and it was slipping and it, it was still lighting pushes, up the wrist. Push, pushes yeah you yeah, can yeah. get to your foot on the brake and it will never stop you know what the <laughs> gearbox it's a single clutch but it's not it's not that bad it's like not it's, that bad yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. like it's it, there's a lot of you know, lamborghini single clutches are much much worse so this kind of feels like the end of era single clutch where they kind of perfected it and it was as good yeah as because it was you were like on the first gear and just like still Keep slipping, slipping, yeah, slipping, yeah, yeah. then you switch the second gear. And it and keeps it slipping a bit. Yeah, it it slips a bit, a bit and then it sets you the up. The whole full power like comes to the old rear yeah. rail wheels. Yeah. And then it pushes you back. It sets you off. No, I mean this is this is quite something, this car. I feel very, very lucky. I mean, massive thank you oh, yeah. to you guys, AMG, Geneva and uh, yeah, Group Chevalier and you Alex for organizing this because this You're is welcome. Really appreciate it that you came here in Geneva as well. Oh, it's a pleasure. To shoot some videos and it's a pleasure. Especially on this one. I think that's it's the rarest one that we've shoot. It is, isn't weekend. it? Except the Veyron. It's like yeah. also quite rare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but true. that one is also very, very special here. No, but and I think it's gonna I see SLS is continuing and them being one of the all time greats. Like yeah. they're like really a, a only a, made it in time. So Exactly. That's also very I important. can't see them going down in time. I see them holding or going up. Mm. And that's what it is. You know, when you're looking for a car to invest in, this is what you want. You want something which has its own character, something, yeah, which has this sort of raw aspect mm. to it and this defines it perfectly. It is Europe's muscle car. Absolutely. And yeah. we love it yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, we're about to show up again at the dealership, so we're going to hop out of the car and have a proper look around it again. Look at that gorgeous exterior. And yeah, anyways, let's go back to the dealership. And we're literally right back where we started. Alex, yeah, thank nice you one. so much. Thank you. It. Thanks for sorting this out. This is, you know, if you guys are in Geneva and you want to come by and see some cool cars, as you can tell, there's a lot of very, very cool sure. stuff here. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's really nice. Uh, anyways, guys, take care. Oh, I've just noticed this. This is awesome. Is this yeah, a GTC? Oh no, this is a GTR Roadster. Limited 750 in the world, which is 750 quite in the world. rare. Yeah, really rare. There it is. 
Very the nice. whole wing, the whole Yeah, it's got the, the wing, wing and everything. Out. Yeah, really nice. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, just leave a little thumbs up and we'll be back with more content very soon. Cheers and bye-bye.